pleasant Wednesday evening, everyone. Pleasant Wednesday evening, everyone. And an unmuted Twitch stream replaying back the double welcome, which, yeah, that's not the worst thing in the world. <clears throat> we are on the ground at Lake Placid. And, uh, yeah, we're here to pack the pattern tonight. It's uh, the Boston Virtual Airspace, and we're going to be a part of it. Let me show you what we have planned for today. It's essentially a slant alpha type route. We're going to be heading from Lake Placid up to uh, Burlington, down the Victor 229 airway to, uh, is this Gardner? And then Victor 431 to Reaver, and then into Boston. <clears throat> not 100% sure which direction Boston is landing. That's really not my concern, my main concern right now for Boston. Uh, really, it's it's this stuff kind of brewing around here, and we've had some storms sliding up the East Coast pretty much all day long. And so right now, it looks like we have a nice weather window, and we're hoping to be able to get, <coughs> excuse me, get into uh, Boston. Um, our alternate is actually Nantucket, and that may not be the best choice in the world. We may have to may have to have an alternate like Bradley or something or Albany back here just in case but uh yeah let's see what let's see what transpires hope everybody's had a great day uh happy last day of July summer is officially over for me because I was back to work today and so yeah it's good to kind of unwind after a a day of real work with some simulator fun and uh that's what we're going to be having here today, hopefully. <clears throat> we are in the King Air, the Flight 1 Beechcraft King Air 200 Super. And I am going to be, even though we have a, a slant alpha route, I am going to be uh, entering it into the G1000 just because I want to I just want to make sure that I remember and stay semi-current on how to load flight plans and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll be actually, we'll be using using our navigation, our G1000 today. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll remember what uh, how to do everything. So, we'll work through the checklist here. We're going to get the brake set. I don't remember what state I left this in. All the panel switches should be off. And they are, <clears throat> man, I can't get my throat cleared here for some reason. Power lever levers are idle. Um, prop levers can come fully forward. Condition levers are cut off. Okay, we're in good shape there. Okay, cabin signs can come to... Let's see here. Cabin science can come to right there on. Our temp can go to auto. Oxygen supply is uh, not needed because we're only going up to what, are, what is our planned altitude today? No, I don't think I've actually filed this report just yet. All right, bear with me here. We're going to take this flight plan and get it filed with I don't know why I don't just show you this um, we are slant going to consider ourselves slant golf today we are in the uh, King Air 200 we are departing from Lima Kilo Papa heading to Boston and I actually think we'll just put Albany as our as our uh, alternate and I would say here within the next half hour we will be airborne predicting a flight time of about 55 minutes <clears throat> we have full tanks we'll be in that 220 range and um, just looking at our just kind of looking at our uh, Airways here, it looks like we have to be above 6,000 the entire way since we're heading east. 
we'll go ahead and say seven and I'll, I'll actually just bump it up to nine or thousand I mean we've got it's a it's a long enough trip we can get up there a little ways and if we need to adjust because of weather you know then we'll go ahead and do that um, okay I can't file it just yet because I'm not connected to the network November 520 Yankee Kilo we are King Air 200 Man, I can't even remember the code BE20. Okay, then we'll file this flight plan and uh, yeah, we can get ready to resume our checklist. All right, um, cabin sign, oxygen supply, yeah. So standby pump. Guys can come on. Oh, I think I even have. Have my battery on here oxygen supply no battery firewall fuel firewalls open standby pump let's check the cross feed here yeah I think actually I I may have left my no my battery's not on yet that's uh, kind of important to everything here. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Okay, been a little bit of a of a week also. Um, all right, uh, we were. Let's see. We checked our standby pump. Cross feed is working just fine. Okay, we'll turn those uh, turn the standby pumps back off. Looking up here at the enunciators as we did that. Hey, Wolfpack Gamer checking in. Hello, sir. Happy Wednesday, man. Welcome to welcome to Lake Placid. All right, we've got like I say, full tanks, and our auxiliary overrides are auto, which is good. Let's uh, check the voltage meters. That's up to 80. That looks great. That's doable. We can get things started. And enunciator lights. Thing looks like it's working and we can turn the beacon on Let folks know we're getting ready to fire this bad boy up okay right. can I remember how to get it started well I think so so the ignition right ignition coming on let this guy spin up here to about right there I think is good and that baby is coming alive Nice little trip to the science center, to the zoo. You gotta love it. You gotta soak in those last few precious days of summer, Wolfpack. I'm telling you. They go by soon. Alright, generator coming on. This lever actually goes full forward. Turn that off. Spinning up, spinning up, 15, 16, that looks good. Engine number one is up and running. I love those, love those big turbines. All right, generator two can come on and uh, bring the powers back to low idle both starter ignition can come off we'll turn the avionics switch which is already on that's kind of not good but uh, now we're ready to enter our flight plan so let's pop up here we got control three can or shift three shift four we can enter our flight plan and this is really what I was wanting to uh, to practice today guys I I just really felt like it's been a while since I've entered in anything into the to the G1000 so let's see if I remember how to do this so we've got to spin this guy up if I remember right there we go whoops so we are K uh, what did I say where we were at Lake Placid LPK nope that's not it 
That's not it. LKP. LKP. Backspace. LKP. Lake Placid, New York. That's us. That's our... Uh, well, it's saying it's our destination, but it's not. We need... Bravo Oscar Sierra to be the destination. All right, there we go. Oh, we're backwards. Oh, dang. Dang, nabbit. See, these are the little things that I forget how to do. Let me see if I can just insert that right here. There we go. And then I can come up, I think, and delete. Clear this waypoint. It's just different enough from the Carinado that it's like I forget every time what I'm doing. Okay, so there's no uh, there is no departure here. Lake Placid is an uncontrolled airfield. Um, and I'm going to just have a quick peek at the weather. Do I have ATIS yet for Boston? I'm a little far away to pick up the ATIS, but we can at least kind of get a sneak peek here. All right, winds are one nine or zero. So what's that going to be? What's our best guess? One nine or zero? Probably the two twos. I bet we're landing, which would be great because uh, this this flight plan takes us right to the to the north edge of the airport, and it would be great if we could get. Runway 22, probably 22 left is generally what they give us when we're heading in that direction. So uh, we'll kind of hang on as far as as putting any approach or anything in, but we'll just we'll just be expecting that, and uh, we'll be ready to to rock and roll. Oops, I don't think I want to put this waypoint in here. I think I need to go down to Boston, and I think I need to insert the waypoint right here. So we're going uh, Burlington, Bravo, Tango, Victor. Yes. Then we are jumping on, and this is something I always forget how to do. Yeah, so if you want to enter the airway, you go to Burlington, which is where we start the airway. You hit Menu, and you scroll down to uh, Load Airway. We need the Victor 229er. There it is. And then we are getting off of this airway here at Gulf Delta Mike. All right, so there's everything from Burlington to Gardner. All right, that's in there. There's Airway Victor 229er. Then we're going to come down here because now we need to, from Gardner, enter a new or load a new airway. Load that guy up, and it's the Victor 431. And this airway we will follow until Reaver or Rever, Revere, Revere. Duh, it's Boston. Holy cow! I need to go to bed. I think. All right, there's the waypoints along that airway. And then just to, oops, just to make sure we have everything where it should be. Boston is, yep, it's our final final waypoint. We'll, when we're at that point, we'll go to procedures and we will um, pick out our approach and, and arrival and all that good stuff. Okay. <coughs> Again, my apologies for the coughing and hacking. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, I wanna, we're going to close the flight plan down. We'll zoom in because we do have a little bit of a safe taxi that we can use. And this Flight 1G1000 has a nice little safe taxi. And uh, our, let's see. Weather information here in Lake Placid. We have uh, 70 degrees, nice day. Um, 224, oh, it's calm wind, so we could, we could pick whatever runway we want. We're going to get on up to uh, in this area. So we'll have some 20, 22 knot winds, but I think we'll be okay. We may have to do a little bit of dodging 
storms and things like that as we get closer to Boston, but I think we'll be okay for now. So, uh, all right, looks like we have, what do we have, a runway, I'm not familiar with this airport. In fact, I don't know that I've ever flown into or out of this airport, so it looks like we have 14 and 3, 2, 4,196 feet, good condition. Um, all right. Well, let's do this thing here. So it, for us, if it, I mean, it would make sense for us to take runway 14 because then we're kind of, we're departing towards the southeast and it saves us a little bit of turning around and there's a little bit of terrain to, uh, to consider here as well. So we want to make sure that we're safe in that regard as well. Okay, never did figure out, by the way, the panel issue. It had, it was turning on the uh, G1000 light though that made the panel go away. So we're gonna stay away from that and uh, turn the rest of those lights on. They don't really take effect until it gets a little bit darker, but I think for uh, for our needs right now, we're okay. So there we go, there's there's our airport, or excuse me, our runway. I think we can, looks like we can just take a left here and taxi out and be just fine. And uh, once we get ourselves airborne, then we'll call and uh, and pick up our IFR clearance here. We need to enter in a little bit more data though. Let's not skip ahead here. All right, we've got uh, the flight plan in. We've got, uh, we need to enter our Barrow and 3006 is what I'm seeing. So oh, that's pretty close. We need, uh, let's see, our CDI needs to be on GPS because we are gonna be using that. Our initial heading as we come out of here, I think we're going to be we're going to be making a a left-hand turn and kind of heading east here. So we'll probably depart and and be heading a little bit southeast of this track. We'll turn around and come back and just re-intercept this this little track to Burlington. So I'm going to say we'll make a left turn, you know, somewhere you know, probably about. 100 or so. Let's see. Uh, might even be a little further north than that. Yeah, 100 would be south of 90. Sorry about that. So let's let's say we're gonna just turn 060. Just just head back to the northeast. Intercept that. You know, we'll we'll intercept this course here. I don't know that we'll need to be quite that that dramatic but uh, but we will we are going to go ahead and just set the Burlington VOR just in case it is uh, it's 117.5 and we'll put that in there just oops that's in nav 2 I don't want nav 2 all right, 117.5. Okay, that'll be in there just in case we need it. You never know. Old habits die hard when you uh, fly slant alpha. But okay, and then our final thing, let's see, that we need to do. We need to make sure that our uh, we need our altitude in there. We're heading up again to I say 11,000. Is that what I filed? I think it's what I found. No, nope, nine or thousand. Nine or thousand. And that's all weather dependent again. It's gonna just we're gonna have to wait and see uh, what happens here. Alright, I think we have what we need. And See Boston Center is going to be on 3470. We'll have that ready to go. We, if we're leaving uncontrolled, we'd want to be making our uh, our calls to Unicom here and 
I am just checking right now to see if there's anybody else in the vicinity. I don't, I don't see anybody. We're the only departure, and I don't see any other traffic anywhere around, so I'm not going to worry about typing that in. Most of the action looks to me like it's heading in between kind of Baltimore, Raleigh, and yeah, there's a nice little stream here, Atlanta. Boy, they've, they've got just weather all up and down this route. It's going to be uh, going to be tricky. And we'll add a little a little slow flying King Air to the mix. So uh, just to keep just to keep things interesting, those guys love it, love it when I do that. Let's see. Anything else before taxi transponder is uh, we are squawking right now. We're squawking VFR. Oh, Charlie. We check the controls. Pull down, pull left, pull right. Everything looks to be working fine. We're going to go ahead and we need taxi light, navs, recog, strobe. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the pedo heats on just, just in case. We've got some weather around us here and you just never know. Um, and, uh,. Alright, parking brake is off and we can go ahead and the parking brake is going to be off. I think it's time to time to taxi. You can see this is uh, one of the Orbix enhanced airports. There's quite a bit of static aircraft and there's people walking around, all that good stuff. Kind of the neat little touch for these small mountain airports up here in the New York area. take this taxiway here to the end of runway 14 and we'll do kind of our final checks and we'll be ready to depart get a sip of tea here and see if that helps my dry throat <clears throat> Wolfpack uh, any update on the laptop situation have you managed to parlay maybe a new a new machine out of the deal. All right, really should look around a little bit. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful little airport. Let's see if I can do this without taxing into the grass. Nice scenery around. Of course, I mean, they hosted the Winter Olympics one year, right? I mean, so you know it's going to have some really nice looking mountainy scenery around. All right, I think we're going to kind of pull up here to the hold short line. And we've got just a little bit more of our checklist that we need to go through. And then we're ready to, uh, to make our call and, and get rolling. So, let's see, parking brake needs to come back on. We are going to, uh, let's see, we need to turn the bleed errors. They need to be open. Okay, they're open, those enunciators one off. We need to set our cabin pressure. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to be, you know, if we just kept everybody at about a, Maybe even a, just a 4,000 foot, that would be just fine. Rudder boost will come on. We are going to turn the autopilot on just for a second so we can get our... Get a 
a little bit of a flight director there. Okay, that's that's there. Um, flaps need to be set for approach. That's good. Trim is spinning like a mad dog. What is going on? Why are what is going on, Trim? Holy cow! Full up. That is not what I want. That, my friend, is going to be an issue. Why did it do that? And it won't. It will not un. Wow. Why in the world did it do that? Why is it doing that? That's a problem, folks. I have never seen that happen before. What is going on? Auto trim. Yeah, that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be a huge issue. Huge issue. And I've got. Now I've got. This and this. My. Uh, yeah, my. Yeah, that's that's a problem. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to back taxi and try to troubleshoot that here. What's it telling me here? The AP trim has failed. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. if I can get that. That's about where it needs to be. Check back outside. Am I appear to be alright, back to normal there. That was really strange, guys. Maybe I just didn't get autopilot turned off. Yeah, that's okay. That looks like we've got that I must just not have turned the autopilot off. So you turn the autopilot on, you Click the go around switch. Oh, I know what I did. You're supposed to. Okay. I'm supposed to turn the yaw damper off. See? Again. This is why you have a checklist, and this is why you fly a plane and practice these things. So you do. Um, to get this little, uh, this little flight director, this little uh, indicator of your, of your takeoff um, angle, of, angle of attack, you turn the autopilot on. You turn the yaw damper off, you click the go around button, and then that gives you, that's just a little thing that they've built in here to give you basically that degree to, to shoot for on takeoff. All right, I feel much better about that. <laughs> Flaps approach, we do have those set. Yes, the um, yaw damper off, flaps the trim set. Auto feather needs to be armed. Yeah. Engine ignition, those need to come on. I have anti ice set just for pitos right now only. I will go ahead, I can zoom the range out here. I don't, I no longer need the safe taxi. Zoom that out so I can kind of see where I'm going. Okay, that looks good. And then, um, my heading is set. Again, I'm planning on making a a bit of a left-hand turn upon departure to intercept that outbound, essentially the outbound radial into Burlington. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. I don't have my I don't have my ref speed set in there. I'm kind of lazy about that, to be honest with you. Uh, we rotate about a just about a hundred knots in this plane, so uh, I get, like I say, I get a little bit lazy with that. Sometimes that's not a good habit. Okay, Lake Placid traffic, King Air 200, 520 Yankee Kilo, departing runway 14, Lake Placid. go that far. Uh, 
All right, so you can see the hill ahead that we got to make sure we navigate, and I think we're going to be just fine. Power up. Stay on the brakes until 1500. Time to go flying. Sixty, ninety, and rotates. Just about ran out of runway there, didn't we, guys? Holy cow. Positive rate. Gear will come up. We will begin our left hand turn. Not following our angle of attack reference right now because we're trying to get some elevation. Alright, gear coming, or sorry, flaps coming up. There's 060. Making good power, climbing up and out, and there's our outbound radial. Go ahead and turn and intercept that. We'll kind of hand fly this a little bit here. Don't want to let the uh, airplane have all the fun. Can't stay outside too long, I'm afraid. <laughs> Make sure that we stay on course. All right, things are looking good. Pull the power back just slightly, get her kind of stabilized. scenic. Alright, getting up into some of those IMC conditions, so let's go ahead. We'll engage, uh, actually engage heading mode first. We don't have to go too far to the left, but I want to go until we're intercepting and then uh, we'll put the nav on also. Oh, we're close enough, we'll go ahead and grab the nav right now. Let's switch over to Boston Center, kind of listen to what they're saying and see if we can get a word in edgewise and see if we can't get an IFR clearance. Yeah, maybe we'll go ahead and do it right now. See if I can get a little bit of a fix here. 25 miles. Boston Center, King Air 520, Yankee Kilo. King Air, Yankee Kilo, Boston. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, just departed Lake Placid, about 25 miles uh, to the west, inbound Burlington, and we'd like to pick up our IFR clearance into Boston. Forty six forty and ident five two zero Yankee Kilo. Four six four zero. Transponder code 
four six four zero and I didn't. Plane's doing a nice job of maintaining good power, climb almost to nine or thousand. We could have easily went higher and, and looking at things, maybe that would have been smarter. <laughs> But uh, for now, I think I think we're okay. Let's see what Center thinks about our flight plan. Clear to you, Boston. Loving airport. Director Wellington has filed on the T-9000. Clear to Boston. Uh, direct. Excuse me. Clear to Boston. Clear direct Burlington as filed. Climb and maintain Niner Thousand King Air Five Two Zero Yankee Kilo. Thanks. All right, so we were approved basically exactly as filed. Um, so that's that's always a good thing. And I don't I don't do that very often. Um, usually when I depart. Uh, an uncontrolled airfield, I'm doing it to fly, you know, VFR. But it's, again, it's good practice to uh, to do that every once in a while. Get up in the air from an uncontrolled airfield. Not a ton of traffic around. And uh, just pick up your IFR when you're en route. And sometimes they'll, they'll change you up a little bit, you know, and, and you've got to make some some changes on the fly. You got to put some things in your FMC that you uh, weren't necessarily planning on doing. Okay, we're getting bounced around a little bit here. Okay, so we need to pull the power back, pull the RPMs. We want the RPMs about 1800, and we want the uh, turbine RPMs to be, or the turbine percent to be up at about 91. So the props, 1800 turbines, 91. That's kind of the ideal, the ideal cruise power setting. Sorry about that. I had a little text. Anyway, the, the POH says that's the recommended power settings for cruise. I might have said climb there. Sorry about that. 1,891. So we're getting pretty close. That's probably going to do it. We are finding some bumps. No question about that. I don't see anything here. Okay, well, sky okay, vector as far as turbulence necessarily listed, but uh, you know, not like down here. They've got some obviously some significant yeah things listed here. Ooh, a little VA, VIP heading into Morristown and awesome. I wonder what's going on down there. Well, I'm just kind of looking at, uh, I don't know that going up higher is going to do us much good. We don't have a weather map in this particular plane, but I do have active sky map that I can kind of look at here. And you know, I'm not seeing really much other than cloud cover. And maybe if we turn and start heading south, it'll start to ease up a little bit. All right, well, we're at cruise, so let's just go through our after takeoff checklist here. We missed that. We do have everything. Uh, got our power torque all set. Auto feather can come off. 
Auto ignitions can come off. Pressures and temps, we've been monitoring those as we've been uh, getting getting our prop and our turbine set. Prop sync can come on. Where uh, Where's our prop sync at? Maybe I'm thinking... Does this have a prop sink? Might be thinking about the Duke as far as prop sink goes. I don't know that this has a prop sink. <laughs> that may that may be a holdover from the uh, the Beechcraft Duke 60. All right, so we've got. Flight plans entered. We can we'll be able to pick up the ATIS here, I would think, fairly soon. I'm not a hundred percent sure why we don't have it right now, but maybe it's just because we're a little too far away. I'm not sure. Twenty-five arrivals coming into uh, Logan. We are going to try to make a part two of this flight if we have a chance, and that will be from Logan down to Nantucket. We'll kind of see how part one goes here. Boy, that's pretty, isn't it? Yep, that, uh, that's pretty scenic. Pretty scenic. Twenty-seven seventy. The robot free arrival from the 
Sort of hard to come back inside after views like that. All right, everything's looking good cruising along on the Victor. What are we on the Victor 229er? And we're going to be be making a little bit of a left-hand turn here um, at this intersection near Burlington, and then I think it just kind of does another one here down at uh, Keene, but then the big turn is Gardner, and hopefully somewhere <laughs> around the Gardner area we will get our... Uh, our approach clearance. I'm just kind of taking a look. I guess we've got uh, we've got a few options. I think 
in the garden or four might be might be our baby. We would enter here at Gardner and then fly to Revere and then down. That seems likely. I feel like I've done this approach before with uh, with Boston kind of in this South Ops situation. So we'll kind of keep that one in, in our back pocket just in case. And we'll see, I guess. If we do come in on the Gardner 4, it's very likely that we'll be, we'll be getting ILS 22 left as our approach. All right, everything looking very good to this point. All of our temps. Are looking fantastic. Still 52 degrees outside. That's that's not half bad. A little bit of a little bit of a right crosswind at 16. Kind of bouncing us a little bit still, but overall not too bad. If you've never flown up here, you wouldn't maybe understand just how mountainous some of this terrain can be. This is kind of the Burlington area. And you can see there's there's plenty of elevation. You know, it's yeah, it's not the it's not the Rocky Mountains, it's not the you know Sierra Nevadas, but there's some pretty pretty good fun flying around here. Lots of little small airports and uh, can be quite a challenge, especially in the winter time. Very fun airspace. All kinds of variety. I've, I've talked about it many times. Just Everything from mountainy kind of terrain, like you see here, to uh, to coastline and all the stuff that comes with, you know, coastal weather. Some large cities. Some unmanned airports. I mean, it's just it's a huge, huge airspace. 
all the way from Maine in the north down to uh, the New York area. Need to update my heading bug here. All right, let's see. Three miles from JAMA, we're still on that 229er airway. I'm seeing a few more frequencies popping on here. Let's see if we've got. Yes, indeed. All right, seeing a few more departures, approaches. There's Nantucket. Boston Tower ground delivery, we've got all those, and then the ATIS, 3500, zero, zero. let's just take a peek here, we won't listen to it, looks like we've got information, Oscar, 230 at 8, so that still favors that approach into the runway, 22 left and 22 right, good visibility, 10 statute miles, a few clouds at 4,000, broken at 13,000, Yep, ILS 22 left approach in use, departing runway 22 right. F627 contact Boston, approach 133.0. And yes, indeed, yes, indeed. So we can, I'm almost positive, we'll be getting that Gardner 4 arrival. We may not even get that. We're, we kind of, by default, are on that arrival. So we might just be cleared for the ILS approach as we get closer. So either way, it works the same. But it won't, won't be a bad idea to just kind of have... Let's just look at that Gardner 4 again, just so we have... A little bit of a feel for altitude here, so, alright, so this is Manchester, we come down to here, so if we're landing runway 15, that's not us, so we don't have to worry about all other runways, we need to be at 11,000, so we're, we're already below where we need to be, and we're non-turbojet, so we're right at 9,000, which is ideal for us. So we could fly this approach because we are at 9,000. And then we'll probably be vectored and given a little bit of a descent here to Revere. And then again, ATC may surprise me totally and give me something different. With us being a little slower moving, they will sometimes clear you to a different different uh, runway of had that happen a couple different times I'm trying to remember which runway it was that I was clear to I think it was yeah so this won't this won't apply to us today but there's been some times when we've been landing west and all the all the heavies are coming in there and they'll bring the, the smaller turboprops down here to runway 32. That's kind of fun to get that runway every now and again. But uh, I'm sure we'll be 22 left. Sounds like we have a new controller here. Alright, just a little visual here as we're waiting. Here's us coming in from the northwest. We do have a decent amount of traffic. 26 arrivals, not half bad for a Wednesday evening. That's uh, that's what you get on these packed the patterns, and they're coming from all over the place, up from uh, yeah, Augusta. This guy's coming in from, uh, is that Montreal? CYUL, Dallas Fort Worth, that's Toronto, Ooh. Kansas City. They're coming in from all over the place. It's too bad New York is offline because it was a fairly nice little string of ATC all the way through here. But uh, yeah, it's it's 9:30. <laughs> 
on the east coast right now, so I don't I don't blame those guys a bit for heading to bed. For the most part, the weather has held. We have had some turbulence, a little bit of a uh, little bit of moderate chop. At least up into about the Burlington area, and it's been good, fairly smooth since then, so we're happy about that. Five miles from Ean. That's the that's the Keen intersection, and then uh, one last little quick leg down to Gardner, and then we will begin our left-hand turn heading much more direct southeast to the airfield. Again, we're just crossing over Keene right here. We'll get down to Gardner. We'll turn 111 and we'll be heading into Revere. For all intents and purposes right now, I feel pretty good about our altitude. We're at 9,000. I feel good about uh, the route that we have. It's taking us to the correct side of the airport. We do have approach on 1825, so let's get that preloaded here. Be ready to jump over there. And since the 8 has told us, by the way, that we can expect ILS 22 left, let's go ahead and just grab that information. We can at least get some of that stuff plugged in here. So, uh, localizers 110.3, approach courses 215. Let's put those pieces of information in. Haven't updated our nav radio here at all. That's not good on my part. 110. Oops. That's going to be our ILS frequency. And we'll hold off with the heading until we actually plug this into the G1000 because I think it may actually do it for us. And probably would, probably does both the frequency. I'm trying to remember. 750 I don't think does and the 1000 does or vice versa. It puts the, puts the approach course and the frequency in automatically for you. American 363 contact Washington, 7.72. 1322, 7 American 263 Aqua 3604, cross lobby at 18, 9,000, Boston, Alpha 3001. A little airport down there. 
All right, closing in on Gardner, then that, again, that hard left-hand turn to 111. If you joined us late, we uh, departed from Lake Placid tucked up there in the beautiful mountains. Is that western New York? Is that is that where that's at? And uh, are making our way down to Boston Logan. It's all part of the, like the pattern event that the Boston virtual air traffic controllers are putting on. Those guys that you hear in the background. And we're getting, we're closing in on Boston, actually. We're making a final turn here at Gardner. We're expecting the ILS 22 left, and we're thinking there's half a chance we may get the clearance, the Gardner 4 clearance as well, as far as, as an arrival goes. We're holding off, plugging anything in. It doesn't take long to get it entered into the uh, G1000. We're also going to be expecting a handoff to approach here sometime fairly soon. We do have information. Oscar, we're ready to uh, to report that. Depending on how this flight goes, by the way, we are planning on hopping back in, or, or reloading, I should say, a flight plan uh, that would take us down to Nantucket. waiting a little bit to see what the weather situation was going to be, but it looks to me like looking at both the sky vector which sky vector is using the uh, nope, that wasn't for me, I was a little bit broken 520 Yankee Kilo, contact box 1.25 1825, 520 in kilo. See it? I couldn't quite hear. It was kind of broken. So let's go over there and then we'll talk a little bit more about the weather and all that good stuff. Eighteen. Oh, I have eighteen two two in there. Darn it! All right, let's try that again. Eighteen two five. There we go. Might as well put tower in before I check in. 288. There we go. Austin Approach, good evening. King Air 520, Yankee Kilo at Niner Thousand. We just passed uh, Gardner. Okay, we'll expect the visual approach to two right, five two zero Yankee Kilo. All right, so that's a little bit different, but that actually makes things that much easier. Um, I don't necessarily know that there's much I'm going to put in even to our uh, to our flight plan. You know what? Let's let's just take a quick look. Nick's Aviation checking in. Hello, sir. He's saying uh, Nantucket is great. I used to fly the Cessna 402 in there with my grandfather. Oh, how cool is that, man? 
Yeah, I, it's a it's a must-have scenery, I think, and and Orbix has done such a nice job with uh, with modeling it. So, all right, let's we're gonna swing down here to Boston. Let's take a look at the procedures here that we have to choose from. We are going to select the approach. And let's see what we have here for 2 2 right. Approach vision jet 823 Sierra Bravo is at 10,000 crossing. Uh, yeah, I, could, I don't know that we. I don't know. There's there's a VOR into 2 2 right. Okay, we'll, we'll load that up. Um, we're just going to say vectors here. We're going to just load that in. So we'll have that. We'll have that localizer in just in case. I don't know that we'll need it, but let's see what we have. I don't know that we even have. Do we have that localizer approach listed on? That might be it. I may have an approach listed that's not really listed. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do some digging. I'm I'm actually gonna fire up one one zero to send and maintain eight thousand five two zero Yankee Kilo. Okay, I can't see very well because it's starting to get to that weird hazy. So five miles from Weird hazy, sort of hard to see hour of the day, and we'll do a little VS here. We'll descend about a thousand feet per minute. That should be just right. We might have to come off the power just a little bit. Oh, we got some traffic. Keep an eyeball on here. Right, one, nine, zero, one, 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 one. Um, Nix, it's funny that you mentioned your grandfather. You know, this this channel um, is uh, named for my grandfather, who was uh, the one that took me flying, not around Nantucket, but uh, same type of same type of deal. It was a Cessna, slightly smaller Cessna than the 402. It was a Cessna uh, 150. <laughs> Barely enough room for him and I, and I was like a six-year-old kid. Get a little quick here. I'm going to back off on the power. Try to get it slowed down. I don't want to overtake this guy. I don't know what that guy is. But uh, I definitely don't want to undercut him. He's probably landed on 2-2 two -two left. Just do a little parallel approach. Deal, but uh, yeah, it, I remember vividly that, that plane. I've got a picture somewhere of, of my brother and I standing out in front of the thing. And the thing is barely bigger than a doggone kit plane. I mean, it's, I mean, it is, but it isn't. But uh, my grandpa was—he wasn't a small dude. You know, he had to go a buck buck 80 buck 90 and uh but you know it fit fit us just right and uh he enjoyed it and i enjoyed it and he let me make a few turns and well i'm starting to hit some turbulence and some uh poor frame rates here guys that's not good but yeah i mean thank, thank god for, for our grandfathers that teach us the things that Stick with us, you know, how to fish, how to fly. Six thousand five two zero Yankee Kilo. Man, this is gonna be a problem, guys. I'm not gonna be able to get a lot done here if I'm gonna be this choppy. Wonder what's going on. I mean, I know I'm getting, there's a turbulence thing happening here, that's a, that's a given, but it's really stuttery on the inside view. Yikes. This could be a, 
Okay, Vectors, ILS 22 left. We'll stay on the present heading 528 Kilo. All right, well, that dirty dog. So let's pull that up from here real quick. We want a back up here. 1990 approach to me up. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now what? What am I? 1990 Bob approach. Procedure. Enter. I'm trying to remember. There we go. ILS two two left. Enter. We're gonna get vectors here. And uh, we can actually activate it because we're on vectors to final right now. Okay. Yep. There's our traffic ahead of us. We're getting bounced all over the place here. It's weird because when I'm outside, the frame rates are just fine. When I'm inside, not so much. Now this. Five thousand and two one zero five two zero eight kilo. So we're we're well below two one zero right now. So we're going to go down to five thousand. Our speed is fine. Keep that descent rate going. Uh, there's our runway down there. There's traffic that we're going to be following. Okay, I need to... Uh, be checking here. Approach checklist. Approach is loaded. Left turn 040, 20YK. 040, okay, we need a little bit of a downwind vector there because we are still a bit high. That's that's going to be just fine and gives us a little bit of time to let that guy in front of us get himself down on, on the approach. Okay, back to uh, back to business here. We're below 10,000, so we need to go ahead and we're going to put the auto feather on. We're going to put the auto ignitions on. Taxi lights never did come off. Left heading zero three zero. Keep the turn going to zero three zero five two zero Yankee Kilo. There eight two three zero Bravo. All right, so I can actually switch this over now to yep. So this to answer your question, the G one thousand puts the approach course in for you. And we had already loaded that, so uh, your flight check in, uh, X, uh, did you just come from? that's pretty cool. Uh, the yeah, 750, I don't think does. Gosh dang it. Stay outside where it's better looking. That's the strangest thing. Left turn 20 degrees, 520 Yankee Kilo. Yep, I see the traffic coming. There he is. I'm going to get out of his way. You know, I do like this plane. And I have flown it a lot. But there are some definite quirks. This is one of the... Okay, down 3,000, and we'll do a left turn, 220, 520 in kilo. All right. Three thousand. Let's get going down on that descent here, and then we're going to go left turn all the way around to two two zero. 
giving us a little bit of spacing there. Um, anyway, though, uh, what, I, what I'm talking about is this was a... This was an old FSX airplane that I bought, and it made the made the portage over to P3D fairly well, all the way up to version 4.5, which is what I currently am running, and uh, makes me makes me wonder if it's not time to think about an upgrade here so oh gosh we want to go to it's going two two zero was our that's that's not gonna i don't think gonna get us to intercept our our course here but it's getting us down to three thousand our speed's looking good it's gonna give us some room here for traffic. See if we can see Boston. Oh yeah, Boston. But yeah, little things like this. This is a new sort of glitch. We have the panel issue. We have the lighting issue. It might be time for me to shop for a, a new King Air. Okay, turning left 180, and we've uh, got our eyes out. We'll report the traffic 520 Yankee Kilo. We've got our eyes out. Does that even make sense? Yeah, I don't see myself not having a King Air in my hangar, but just thinking this one is maybe maybe reach the end of its lifespan here. Okay, I am not seeing... I'm not seeing the traffic anywhere here. Hmm. No idea. No idea. Okay, we're going to go ahead. Um, I want to not forget about... We'll arm the approach. We're actually above the glide slope right now, so that's also not good. If you're checking in, give me a moment. 1900 clear out, it's running 2 2 up, approximately 10 1 9 0 knots. Roger, Crude Island, 2 and 8 p.m. 9 13, thank you. Oh boy. We're gonna have a hard time. We're gonna have a hard time getting down here, guys. Zero Yankee Kilo traffic, 12 o'clock, four miles, A320, descending a localizer, and the airport's now here, 12 and 10, five. You should be descending at 2,000. Okay, we see the traffic and the uh, airfield, five two zero Yankee Kilo. Five two zero Yankee Kilo, ground maintain the separation from that traffic. Clear visual approach, make sure you right. Okay, uh, we'll maintain separation and back on the visual. 2-2 two, two right, 5-2-0-8 kilo. Okay. Over to tower, 5 2 zero, Yankee kilo. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the gear horn. Let's put the gear down here. You know, we're doing an awful lot here at the last minute. There we go, that's much better. We're going to jump over to tower, and we may have a hard time making this. <laughs> this could be interesting. Tower, good evening, beach, uh, 520 Yankee Kilo on the visual, 22 right. Beach, 520 Yankee Kilo, Lost Tower, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 
Two two like two two right, clear to land, five two zero Yankee Kilo. Alright, we're getting down there. It was uh, not the smoothest approach, sorry passengers. Looks like we do have somebody on the runway right now. Oh, they're airborne, so that's cool, but man, we still have uh, yeah, we still have some frame stuttering going on. Have managed to get ourselves down on the glide slope, but who knows what this landing is going to be like? It's it's like five frames per second at most. This is ridiculous. Almost need to just come back out here. Traffic. No, I don't want to do that. That's uh, frustrating, guys. Frustrating. Okay, second notch of flaps coming in. Apparently I'm bubbling, I can't tell because... Oh boy, the frames, the frames, the frames. Hmm. Well, hopefully it'll smooth out here as we get closer to Boston, which is counterintuitive because now we're loading scenery in. Well, I don't know what is going on here, guys. I apologize. down. Yikes. Props to Beta. Right on Foxtrot. Hold short of Bravo. 520 Kilo. There's Quebec. Alright, I can't live this way. We're gonna do. We're gonna cheat. Sorry. Boston short of Bravo will go over to ground. Five two zero Yankee Kilo. Good night. This could be interesting. <laughs> All right, there. Uh, oh boy. So we're going to get short of. Come in here, short of Bravo, and we need to go over to ground. Good lord, this is brutal. Alright, let's stop right here. I can't I can't even tell what's going on. One two one decimal niner. Man oh man, that is just absolutely brutal guys. I don't I don't have an explanation for what just happened there, but it wasn't good. Uh oh, did we lose ground? Boston. Ground, good evening, King Air 520, Yankee Kilo. We are clear of 22 right on Foxtrot heading uh, to Signature. Air 520, Yankee Kilo, Boston, Signature, Alpha, Alpha 1. Alpha, Alpha 1, 520, Yankee Kilo. American 1885, Boston, Ground. 
Well, all right. Here's here's what we're gonna do, guys. Just as a just as a little test. Let's. We're gonna taxi. We're gonna taxi to signature, and we're gonna switch airplanes. And we're gonna see if we still have the same stuttering problem with this next airplane. We're gonna jump in the Duke. It's a similar airplane, a little bit smaller, not quite as fast. We're gonna see if we have the same issue. And then, I don't know, it's gonna be probably back to the Flight One forums. See if they have some suggestions. The guys have been great to work with, and I've been I've been trying to help troubleshoot the panel issue that uh, that we discovered a few weeks ago. And like I say, they they've they've gotten right back to me, and they've offered all kinds of suggestions. Um, but it just kind of makes me wonder if maybe this maybe this sim is. This aircraft has run its course. Of course, it doesn't make much sense that that's what's happening because it's really this has worked great up until up until about the last 15 minutes of this flight. You know, other than the panel issue. So, like I say, we'll switch over kind of midstream. We'll hop out of one. Fancy, uh, fancy twin into another, and see if we get the same issue. Duke doesn't take us long to get fired up anyway, so. You expect a little bit of stuttering when you get to a, a big airport with lots of traffic and, and uh, some weather, but nothing like this. This is this is pretty excessive. Hey, we've got a uh, tail dragging CRJ. Very cool. Pull up next to this. Airport or airplane that uh, is not recognized. I have no no feel. <laughs> I turn and it's a delay of like five seconds, and then it turns, and then it turns more than you think, and then it doesn't turn as much as you think, and then it straightens out. And wow. Foscrown, yeah, 1333 crossing, right to to right. We're going to travel feet. Okay, we'll pull up next to this guy here. I'm not even going to worry about shutting it down. I'm just going to just going to get up here, semi square. And let's let's do this. Let's we'll pull all the power levers back and all that good stuff. Yeah, Fox, okay, we'll just do a little experiment here on uh, the channel. Fox, Bravo, Zuri, Yankee, Bravo. Thanks. If we have big time stuttering issues, that'll probably cancel our second flight. Because it's, it's possible that uh, the sim just needs restarted, or maybe my machine itself needs a restart. Um, this is the first thing I've done on it today, though, so it, I wouldn't think that... Uh, there should be any memory issues going on, but you never know. Okay, November 626 November. We're going to disconnect from the network just for a second. And, uh, okay, let's hide the menu bar. And we better take a look here. We do need to flight plan just a little, so let's do that real quick while we're waiting. And, uh, so we're now on the ground, Boston. We're going to go to Nantucket. And 
I may even be a recommended route here. Logan 2 is Logan 2. Is that a down here to yeah, it's just dunk basically this this NDB and then onward and inward really truly we probably could fly out here to Gales and then down just the Victor 141 I actually think we'll probably do that instead so let's uh, let's slide this guy over here I'll put in intersection gales and we'll just take that right on into Nantucket. All right. Our speed will only be a buck eighty and we need what do we need? At least a minimum altitude of three thousand. Sounds like a plan, Stan. We'll even go five thousand. 81 miles. Okay, let's uh, we'll put that into our flight planner here. V pilot. We are going to say we're slant alpha now. We are going to say that we are the uh, change to the Duke 60, Boston, Nantucket. Uh, we'll say Martha's Vineyard will be our alternate. And I'm thinking we can be airborne here in the next, oh, 15 minutes. I'll even shoot for 10 minutes. 215. Sky Vector is telling us it's a 29-minute quick hop. We'll have full tanks and 5,000. Okay, that looks good. Let's go get logged in. I maybe even have that as one of my last ones. Yep, 626 November, Beach 60. File that flight plan. And let's see. Let's go have some fun here. Ladies and gentlemen, do need to get this, this, this guy going, though. Um, oh, I'm going to need to pull up my checklist for the Duke. Alright, parking brake set, flight controls. They're set, free and correct. Condition levers are in cutoff. The prop levers can come to high RPM. The, uh, let's see, power levers are idle. Panel switches, they were on. They must have been left on. This is one of those planes that kind of saves the state and kind of doesn't. Uh, it just sort of depends on its mood, I think. Um, okay, battery can come on. We will go ahead and turn the beacon on. Enunciator test. That all looks good. Those all look good. Fuel selectors are on. All this stuff, by the way, closed. Good to go. Sweet. Okay, let's get this thing going here. Pump one coming on. Sweet. I got a PDF or PDC for my clearance. Ignition on, starter on. Let that guy spin up to 12%. And off we go. Brake got turned off somehow. Don't want to go spinning across the parking lot. I've done that before. You get one engine going and you do a lot of really cool 360s. Okay, let's see. Oh, I've got an amendment here. I'll show you in just a second. Turn that power off. Put the generator on. Ignition to auto. Pump 
one generator coming on ignition on starter on spin it up to 12 bada bing bada boom taking a look and making sure no hot starts no hung starts everything looks to be staying within the normal range stabilizing that can come off the generator can come on those are on inverters master coming on all right so the Logan 2 and they want me to take Marconi which I absolutely can take um, so Logan 2 let me show you what this does here oh boy did I get yeah, they don't want us going straight down there which is fine I get that we're going to come out of here. We're going to go Marconi. Boom. And down. So that looks good. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Oh, I guess that's not really a PDC. It was just them asking me that question via text. So I'm still going to have to go ahead and just... Go ahead and just put that in. Logan 2 LFB. File that. We'll go over to delivery and let's get our clearance. And let's see. And wish us luck. We need to turn all this stuff on first. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -bum -bum need to go there to get the VOR radioactive. Okay. Clearance delivery. What are you? 12165. I uh one two holy guacamole. One two take the two please. All right, let's just do it over here. One, two, one, sixty-five. Sometimes that panel is a little bit finicky. Southwest, uh, Southwest one eighty-nine, correct, sir. We'll be going to ground here next, twenty-one ninety. Southwest one eighty-nine, or push back engine start to pause discretion. Five seven, and squawk mode, Charlie, for me, please. And Boston Delivery, Duke 626 November, we're over at Signature and looking to uh, pick up our IFR down in Nantucket. Duke 626 November, Boston Service Delivery, good evening sir. You're, you're clear to the Nantucket Airport via the Logan 2 departure, radar vectors Marconi direct. Maintain 3,000, expect 5,000, uh, correction, uh, uh, correction, maintain, maintain 3,000, expect 5,000, zero minutes there for departure, departure is 133.0, squawk, 1333. Clear to Nantucket, Logan 2 departure, radar vectors, Marconi direct, we'll maintain 3,000, expect 5,000, 10 minutes, departure frequency 3300, and squawk 133. 3 3 6 2 6 November. 6 2 6 November readback is correct. Information Oscar is current. Take, uh, advise uh, raid taxi. Okay, uh, we have Oscar and uh, we're ready for taxi. Roger, right, you can contact ground 121 for taxi. Over to ground. Have a good night. Thank you. Oops, cut him off. Sorry about that. So ground point niner, we will have tower twenty eight eight coming up next. Not not to be in a hurry, I'm just curious 
about the uh, frame stutter thing and I'm really praying for the best here okay let's let's not get ahead of ourselves though we've got uh, let's see our clearance is set we yeah let's get out of here all right that's that's good to go that VOR is alive we do need to uh, we're gonna be coming out on a 130 heading which is just about what we have set here 130 I'm almost positive we'll get well no let me let me not guess I'm on a departure <laughs> that's that's the beauty of the departure you know exactly where you're going and you're cleared on the departure so we need to we need to have a look so we're going to be departing here turning 140 yeah, out here to Marconi. All right, perfect. Let's uh, just pick up page two here just to make sure nothing I'm missing. It's pretty straightforward. Take off, 2-2 two, two left, yep, climb, climb left, turning 140, thence, and uh, yeah, okay, 140. Ground Beach, uh, 626 November at Signature. We're ready for taxi. Information Oscar. November 626 November, Boston Ground, runway 22 right, taxi via Bravo November, cross runway 15 right, hold short runway 15 left. Bravo November, we'll cross 15 right, hold short 15 left, 626 November. All right. One quick thing to check before we get any further. Do I have the Marconi VOR entered in? That I don't think I do. Marconi VOR is 114.7. I do not. So if we're going to track that, we better have that, uh, better have that baby entered in there. Why does it feel like I just lost a little bit of power there? That was really strange. All right. Bravo November. So we'll make a right-hand turn. And the good news is smooth frames. The bad news is they need to come in and spray for weeds. What the heck? All right. Um, Let's find Bravo. Right, alpha to the left, Bravo to the, uh, or Alpha to the right, Bravo to the left. And down to November. Lights have come on. Man, this is a, this is really a pretty airport. At night, no doubt about it. Especially with all the traffic. Ah, uh, speaking of lights, taxi light can come on. Our strobe and our nav need to come on. Ooh, there's a big boy coming our way. I don't want to go head on with that guy. November's coming up. Oh, he's on alpha. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't want to mess with Mr. 747 cargo UPS guy. I think he's going to win 10 times out of 10. Okay, we were cleared to turn on November. We were cleared to cross 15 right. Nick's Aviation asking if this plane is by Carinado. No, this plane is actually an old uh, plane from a company called Real Air, and they no longer are operational. But one of the guys that was a part of Real Air, there were two main developers. And, and the name escapes me. I, forgive me. I won't. Uh, I won't get the name right, so I won't even try. But 
Um, he actually went on and is now a part of Vertex Simulation. And uh, they just put out here this past year the, the Diamond DA60, I think, 68 maybe. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so this is an old plane. They don't, they don't sell them anymore. They don't, they'll support them if you bought it way back in the day, which is what we did. Uh, and it's really a shame because it's a, it's a great little plane. On November, cross 15 left and monitor tower, 626 November, see it. Do I have tower in here? Boston ground, United 980, we are... 2880 is what... Yep, I've got that. Okay, so as soon as I cross 15 left, I'm going to monitor tower. But yeah, it's uh, they're a great group, and I would I have every confidence that the the Vertex Sim stuff has the same attention to detail as this. This plane really was ahead of its time, honestly. Um, it was the first it was the first GA aircraft I bought, and uh, yeah, I was so happy. I thought when they went under and and P3D came out, and I made that switch, I I figured that was it. I would never be able to fly this plane again, but they did just enough to it <laughs> to uh, to make it work in in P3D, and it works really very well. And and I think the texturing, yeah, it's not the it's not the 4K stuff of maybe some of the newer things, but I think it still looks really good, and the performance is very very good as well. So oh, I got to go over to tower. All right, and then I need to put in. Don't need to go too fast here. Don't want to put it in the harbor, Boston Harbor. Not taxiing very well tonight, guys. Sorry about that. Can't even blame. Oh, can't blame frame rates or anything on that. That's just bad taxiing. 3300 is going to be the departure frequency once I get airborne. November 626 November, turn, Boston Power, turn right heading 240, wind 220, Turn right, 240, clear for takeoff, 22 right, 626 November. Okay, so that's a little different than what the departure says. But, got to go with what, uh, what the ATC is saying. So, all right, just a quick check here of uh, before takeoff. Trim is set. Flaps to approach. Landing lights on. Everything else on mode C. Oh, I got to get that on. I don't know if that maybe that was on. I don't know. So the 221, welcome All right, we're ready. On Bravo and old sort of flight. Too much traffic to be sitting around here. Got to get rocking and rolling. Okay, Delta 241 at the end. Yeah, I love that. That's so awesome. <laughs> All right, let's go flying. On to Nantucket. Looking for a rotation speed of about 96. There it is. We're up in, up in a hurry in this plane. You really have to kind of hold it back, honestly. Positive rate will bring that gear up. Another 400. There comes flaps. Back to climb power. Make that right hand turn. Two four zero. Good 
over to departure 626 November. We'll see it. All right. Yeah, it's just as smooth as can be, man. I don't know what's going on with the with the King Air, but all right. I have to start thinking about leveling this baby out here a little bit. Boston departure, good evening, Duke, 626 November, climbing 2500, heading 240. Duke, 626 November, Boston departure, radar contact, climb and maintain at 3000 for now. I'll have higher for you in a little bit. Turn left heading 180. Okay, we'll level at 3000 and left turn 180, 626 November. All right, we can do that. Absolutely just stunning, though. Yeah. Oh, come on, airport. Render, render, render. Render. <laughs> That's too bad. I was hoping to get a little bit of airport lights there in the background. Um, yep, I'm through 3,000. Easy. Got, got to either fly or you got a video, I guess. One or the other. You can't do both. Not to overspeed. This plane will really get it'll really get up and get going. Super, super powerful, small, lightweight. And I really want to pick up the the diamond DA that Vertex Sim made because it, it looks in so many ways very similar to this plane. That's why I haven't bought it because I don't I have this already and it's just a duplicate it's it's a waste of money but uh, maybe somewhere down the line I'll get it It'd be nice if I could actually level off at 3000 also instead of bouncing over and back and high and low um, the bummer part about tonight's flight besides the fact that the approach looked really bad is it might be the third strike for my uh, beloved Flight One King Air 200 Super, I think there's some newer King Airs out there that, uh, yeah, that might might need to be investigated a little more seriously. And that's a shame. I've really enjoyed that plane. It's been an awesome, awesome aircraft. And there may be some things I can do to fix her up. I'm not going to say that uh, it's a done deal, but at a certain point, when things keep breaking... You kind of lose the incentive to keep flying it. All right. I'm doing a terrible job of hand flying this. I'm mostly on the 180. I have not been able to trim out the 3000 to save my life. I'd like to get that speed down more like around 180. I don't need to be going quite so fast. beautiful you know I was trying to make the turnaround so quick that I didn't even have a chance for you to look at weather conditions into Nantucket all right up to 5,066 November let's see here let's I think I'm going to start looking at some different things, so I think I'll go ahead and start the climb, but we'll engage the autopilot 
and uh, we're actually getting cleared. We're past, we're south of Marconi, so I hope we don't get sent back. November 626 November, proceed direct Marconi. All right, direct Marconi, 626 November. Rats, I was just about to say, I think we're past it. All right, let's just double check here. Marconi, Marconi, 11470. That's what I have tuned in right there. So, which way do I turn? This is not... Okay, there we go. Need to get my CDI turned. There we go. Alright. Yeah. 1470. Where this are you? Where do I need to turn? There we go. Guess I wasn't quite as far past as I thought I was. I was getting close though. We're gonna turn about 110. I'm gonna turn that off. I do want to fly this leg completely slant alpha, but I do have to get this fired all the way up so I get the uh, the CDI going. Okay, we'll keep the turn coming around here. I'm going to arm that altitude so I don't go blowing by 5,000 as I'm messing around looking at other things. Turn just a hair more, try to intercept that. We're not on any particular radial here, we just need to point the nose towards Marconi and rock and roll. 40 miles away, so that's not a super long leg. Again, just uh, refresh your memory on what we're doing now. So we actually departed here, and we actually turned away from the VOR just for a little bit, 220. Then we were coming back around now, tracking, well, I can't draw, but tracking straight there. Then we'll hang a right. One nine or seven heading essentially, and uh, we'll actually track direct the airport. The VOR sixteen two. Yep, should be pretty doable. I'm just kind of bummed out, honestly, about the. About the King Air. Um, Al South. Hello, sir. Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome to Pack the November Pattern. 1820 for 626 November. 1820. 1820. Yeah, so I'm just kind of lamenting sim problems here, first world problems. Don't feel too bad for me. Boston Approach, good evening. Duke 626, November at 5000, direct Marconi, about 35 miles to the west. 626 November, Boston Approach. Expect vectors, I lost from my 24. Keep up from the tree, 003. Alright, we'll expect the ILS runway 24 and 3003. Thank you. 626 November. Alright, so Al, here's the deal, man. We started out, we took off from uh, Lake Placid, and we've departed in, in the King Air, heading down to my, you know, to uh, Miami, <laughs> heading down to Boston, and had really a nice flight. It was it was fairly choppy coming out of Lake Placid. There was quite a bit of wind. We we managed to avoid most of the bad weather, but but we did get into some chop. No big deal. Um, but when we got within about Oh, I don't know, probably, probably 20 miles or so of Boston, my frame rates just went out the window. 
And it was the weirdest thing because if I if I picked an outside view, like if I if I picked a view from say this camera, whoops, maybe if I can do it. If I picked an outside view like that, it was pretty smooth. But as soon as I came back inside to the cockpit, it was just the frame rates were horrendous. Um, we managed to, to get it on the ground. It was a decent landing, I think. It was hard to tell, but kind of kind of stuttery taxied it into into signature and and just for testing purposes, we were going to take that plane down to uh, to Nantucket as kind of part two of our flight today. But um, we thought we would just jump in a different aircraft that was kind of similar just to see if we had the same frame rate issue. And fortunately or unfortunately, we, we did not. This, this leg has been pretty smooth, and so um, I'm, I'm a little bit worried. It seems like every time I, I fly that thing, something else breaks, <laughs> for lack of a better um, word. The, the panel lighting has never been great. It's never really worked the way it's supposed to. This is since I've ported it over to a 4.5. We had an issue with, there's a panel right here that has all of the autopilot and, you know, altitude and all those important, <laughs> you know, important buttons. And, and it disappears if you turn on the backlight to the G1000 and the guys don't, aren't sure why and and now with uh, with this stuttering issue I'm kind of thinking maybe three strikes is enough and maybe it's just, it's it's an old it's it's an old add-on it, it's an old P3D or sorry FSX add-on and I love it it's been a great great airplanes. The first airplane that I flew that had any kind of like the, the glass cockpit, the G1000. Yeah, sure. uh, and I just love it, approach. but um, it was it was basically unusable tonight. And so might be time to save my pennies. <sighs> yes, sir. Look at a maybe look at a different a different King Air. I know there's a few different ones out there and there's a few different ones coming out. So I don't know. You're, Al South is saying he gets the same behavior with some of his aircraft too. And and I don't want to write it off because this is the first time I've ever had this stuttering issue with this plane. It's always been fairly smooth no matter where I fly. Um, but tonight, you know, I, it could have been just a combination of you know, there was weather in the area, so that that definitely taxes your your memory, your processor. There w there were quite a bit of aircraft at the time in the area, and so that's you know that's another thing to consider. It's not so bad now. Kind of looking at things now, it's settled down just a little bit. 17 arrivals, 23 departures, but at the time is it was pretty busy. We got vectored. Uh, for traffic essentially on our way in here. We are now by the way. We're gonna have to Marconi and shoot straight down um, So that's another thing that Depart Marconi heading 186 November uh, And then you throw in the fact that you know, there's there's the Boston scenery with uh, you know, that's pretty pretty frame heavy and it might have been kind of when we got close to the Boston area that it just became too much you know for my for my computer to handle and so it may very well be a computer issue and not and not the sim itself but I just something tells me that this this was coded for 32-bit and they've kind of done their best to make it optimized for 64, but I'm not thinking the coding is probably as efficient as as one would be that was like you're saying you're you're saving up for the King Air 350 um, that's in X plane. I'm, I'm thinking that that that's probably one that's built much 
much more efficiently and and can handle the things that uh, that P3D throws at it. What it felt like tonight on my approaches, it felt kind of like some of the old FSX problems that I used to have without the you know out of memory crash error that I was expecting to get you know on short final. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think. Uh, is that who makes that Al South? Is that a Carinado product, or is there is there a, a an X plane developer that's making that King Air 350? Because I'm I may be in the market. I wonder if anyone has a used one they'd sell me. Okay, we're closing in eight miles. And uh, we need to, I'm going to go ahead and put 16.2 in, even though we're not going to be tracking exactly to that VOR, but we'll, we'll put that in just as a reference. And uh, as we look at, you know, let me get, let me make this turn here first, and then we'll pull up the... Uh, the ILS 24 information here. Once we get heading south, I might might take a look here and see also Sir, what. Uh, Alpha Yankee Golf, you're in traffic flying 360. Turn left, heading 030 now. Heading 030. All right, we'll get out to. Uh, Get out here another couple miles, probably lose this VOR just for a second when we get over the top. Carinado has one for P3D. Yeah, I don't, so I don't know if that's the same, if they have an X-Plane version also, but um, it may be in the future. I mean, I don't know. It, 40 bucks, man, that's... 40 bucks is 40 bucks. It's going to take a little while. Maybe that that could be maybe a little, little Christmas birthday action. You know, who knows? All right, we're close. We're within a mile. I think we're going to pop that heading here. When we get down to a mile, we'll pop it. This thing corner is pretty good. There's one mile. All right. We'll make that flip, flippity dip. We'll go ahead and put this on the uh, 180 outbound. Yeah, there we go. Right over the top of it. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I had to, I've had to uh, step away myself. I've, it's just, it just happens. It happens. Popular guy. So, okay, so Nix is saying, yeah, that Carinado has one for P3D. Al South is saying Airfoil Labs is the one for, uh, for X-Plane. I'd be curious uh, just to see a, a report on, on either one of those guys. Okay, let's pop in the Nantucket VOR. We're going to be, yep, just a little bit left of course here. But uh, we're not cleared direct Nantucket VOR, so we're going to just fly that 180 heading. And we do want to kind of be mindful, though, of the, uh, the distance there. We still have 40 miles, so let's just take a quick look while we have a second at the ILS-24 information. Um, so we need a we need a localizer frequency of 1091. I'll put that in real quick. And whoops, where did you go? Where did you go? Approach course going to be 241. And so we'll be ready for that here. In just a little bit. If we do missed approach, climb to 230. 
uh, straight ahead, basically. Alpha, yep, on the 240 out here to the UFTAC intersection. And hold, that's. Heading uh, 240, How far out is that? One zero. And we'll have to tune it in. We'll have to keep the, uh, the Nantucket VOR tuned in. We'll have to figure out what this what this VOR is. When we get out to the intersection, that's where we would hold. More than likely, if we missed today, though, we would just get vectors by ATC before we got we needed to go out that far. So let's just make sure that's not happening, huh? For all the stuttering and things like that, really, we did put it on the ground halfway decent. Oh, by the way, yeah, here's what we were getting ready to talk about. This is this is Nantucket, baby. Foggy, foggy, foggy. We've got quarter mile visibility. We have got fog. We've got oh man, that's that's not good. R24, 1800 V22. So. Try Sierra Alpha Yankee Golf turn 10 degrees left. It's going to maintain 1,500. Is that 200? Am I reading that right? Overcast 200, I think, is what I'm seeing. So that is right. 1,500. Right down to a minimums. Is that even past minimums? I'm trying to. I'm looking at both. Oi vey. Help me read this chart, guys. Al South, you're going to be my uh, my first officer, and Nix, you're going to be my CFI, and Wolfpack, you're going to be my flight engineer here. Um, I'm seeing an ILS runway 24. I'm seeing a decision altitude of 247. Uh, yeah, we're below minimums right now, I think, gentlemen. All right, this just got interesting, folks. If we don't make this approach, I, you know. I don't really have an alternate airport that I have tuned in. Oh, yes, I do. I said Martha's Vineyard. What's Martha's Vineyard look like? Oh, it's, a <laughs> it's a little better. Overcast at 300. Hi, Yawatha, guys. Okay, this is... All right. All right. Let's see how we're, see how we're going to play this today. You are, uh, yeah, B category, right? Yeah, so. Bravo here. So, yeah, we're 247, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's runway elevation plus 200. And right now it's, it's telling me that, uh, yeah, it's telling me that, I just pop it up just in case here. Yeah, I'm seeing quarter mile visibility. I'm seeing fog. I'm seeing a ceiling of 200. All right. Well, buckle up. You know, Al South, you show up at all the right times, man, because uh, up until this leg it's been nothing but but me complaining about the king air and now here we are we actually have to actually have to do some airmanship and uh, I think we're still gonna just leave this and try it try it slant alpha I don't think that it's uh, I don't think we have to get crazy here we know the we know the drill Uh, 
Alright, turn in 190, 626 November. Alright, 66 November, December 19, 2000. Down 2000, 66 November. Okay. Time to get, uh, time to get jiggy with it. Let's pull the power back. We're going to get in the soup. I will say the lowest ceiling I ever successfully landed in was into Nantucket. And I want to say I broke out right at right at two, like 280 or something like that. So, you know, I still had 40 some feet. Well, I take that back. I did I did an auto land in the PMDG one time into into JFK and that took that right down to minimums. I mean, I don't I was just about to go missed and uh and the runway came into sight and and I let it it's, it's still one of the few times I've let the 737 auto land. It was that tight. All right. So here's what we need to do. We need to change this over to the uh, runway. And I turn two one zero. Join the localizer. Six two six November. Okay. I need to get this turned to two forty one first of all. And then we're going to turn two one zero. That looks like 241 to me. We're descending here. We're 22 miles away still, so we're in good shape. And again, if we go missed, we're going to stay on this localizer. We're going to fly 240. We're going to climb to uh, 2,300, and we're going to hold at the Ooftok intersection. But uh, if that happens, we're going to pray for nice ATC that will give us some vectors back around for at least one more attempt. All right? I got to try at least at least a couple times here. Alright, 20 miles out. Speed's looking good. Altitude is coming down to 2,000. We uh, need to check check our approach. Prop sync is off. RPM come up to high. I'd like to get our speed down about 120, which we are. And we can enter, get that, get the speed kind of squared away. We don't need to introduce any flaps just yet. We'll wait till we're, yeah, we'll wait till we're kind of getting to where that glide slope is coming down. We'll get, we'll get intercepted and we'll get on that final approach course. Here's where I'm glad that I don't have that little uh, bot that lets you predict landing rates. <laughs> this is this is truly going to be one where we'll just be happy to to be on the ground. I'm glad they picked this airport because uh, this type of, of approach is fun to do every now and again. Oh, my speed's getting way up. Need to get that speed back down, like I say, to about 120 or so. We'll at least get in flaps range. We're still 17 miles out, so we've got plenty of time. 
All right. Uh, the other thing, let's finish our checklist here. Oh yeah, we we did finish. We've got uh, taxiing, landing lights stayed on. We only were at five thousand. Oh, there we go. Localizer is active. Arm the approach, and we might slide by it just a hair. Pick it up on the other side. Okay, speed's getting good. Maybe a little low. Put some power back in. I'm gonna wait out till I get stable on this glide slope. I don't want to. I don't want any kind of uh, power off stall. This thing glides about like you would picture a brick. All right, there we go. Notch of flaps. Get her stable at 120. At uh, 10 miles. All right, 66 lumber, 9 miles, waves. Maintain 2,000 for establishment requested, but uh, it's from my 2 4 approach. Okay, we'll maintain 9 or 1,000 till established. Cleared for the ILS 2 4 approach, 66 November. 2,000 till established. A firm 2000 till established. What I say, three? What I say, 200 till established, because that's what I'm thinking about visibility here. Huh? Huh? We'll get uh, 10 mile final. We'll see again if we're intercepting that glide slope or not. Just looking at the final approach fix there is waves. Oh, I said nine or thousand. <laughs> so the Nantucket approach says I said nine or thousand. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Give me a break here. I don't want to scratch the paint on this this old bird. Actually, that's part of why I do stream these. Is I'll go back and listen myself, and just see what my phraseology, how bad it sounds. And tuck it approach. If you're listening right now, you might want to go ahead and have the emergency vehicles ready to go. We're pretty stable. Still 11 miles out. Speed looks good. Pressures, temperatures all looking good. I got a good feeling about this. Overcast 200. This will be officially the foggiest approach I've ever attempted, whether we land or not. This will be the the froggiest approach ever attempted on the stream. You're all watching. You're all a part of history. Okay, there's 10. Kind of expected to have the uh, glide slope in by now. Of course, we're only at 2,000, so it does say Obu. Obub. I don't know how you say that. That's the initial fix. Uh oh. More people talking trash. <laughs> And tuck it ground confirms emergency vehicles standing by. <laughs> it might be so thick down there they can't find the runway. I don't know. All right, here comes the glide slope. We're going to make sure gear and everything is down at uh, seven miles. We'll be stable on the approach.
Man, Nantucket ganging up on me tonight. I love it. It's, if you're going to do something epic, you might as well have a good audience, right? Okay. Here we go. Glide Slope is alive. Gear coming down. Watch our speed here. Our V-Ref in this plane is right about a hundred depending on the weight. So we will want to lose a little bit of speed when we get on short final. Information Sierra. You know, I didn't check in with Sierra when I caught when I contacted um, approach. That was a mistake on my part because I did have that information, and I should have let him know that. Speed's increasing just a little bit here. We're five mile final. We're bringing the power back just ever so gently. Hopefully Orbix hasn't uh, decided to build a new high rise right at the uh, base of the runway like they tend to do sometimes. There's four. Seeing a lot of soup. There's Not much else. Third land runway two four six two six November. Did was it me or did some did you notice a hint of sarcasm in that clearance? Might have been just me. I'm kinda sensitive about that kind of stuff in my old age. Good luck. Little does he know. All right, there he is. There's three. We're short final. The final notch of flaps coming down. We'll see if we can get it about uh, just a little over 100 here. And just kind of nudge it on down. Oh, it okay good to know speeds coming up I don't want to do that I'm actually getting a little above the glide slope here which is not good there I see some trees I have ground contact I see the runway we have runway lights right at about 300 and I would say just a little over 300 so we got half a chance at putting this baby down right where we're supposed to. Autopilot's coming off. We drifted a little bit there. And do I not have where, what are my landing lights? Are they not active? What's the deal? Or is it just so foggy? Yeah, they're on. Wow. Oh, slid a little bit to the left, but at the end of the day, man, I think I can live with that. No idea where I'm at. Air 66 November, welcome to Nantuck. Exit right, contact ground, 132.5. Okay, exit right and over to ground, 626 November. Yep, there we go. Whoa, boy. So we are on Charlie. And I'm just, I'm curious here. I, I know I have those, yeah, they're on. Look at that, man. That is some thick, thick fog. All right, 3250. Let's go talk to that smarty pants on the ground here.
and Nantucket ground beach uh, 626 November clear of runway 24 on Charlie uh, just coming into uh, signature I don't even know if they have a signature there November 626 November I see done taxi straight ahead on Charlie to parking have a good night Straight ahead to parking, 626 November, thanks. That's, that was fun. That was dang fun. Downwind. Man, did you join at the right time. Holy cow. I can't wait to recap this with you, buddy. So not only, ah, just missed the landing. Well, you'll have to go back and watch because it actually was, was, well, it was actually more challenging than the normal landings at minimum, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I, I encountered a somewhat sarcastic and salty air traffic controller on the way down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. We the the ATIS actually shows that it's. Let's go ahead and shut this down so you guys can hear me. I don't feel like I'm hollering. The ATIS actually shows that. Uh, Visibility was down to 200, which which is actually below minimums here. Minimums are 247. Downwind was out for ice cream today. <laughs> I inspired you from last time, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was you or Al South that says that's never a bad never a bad thing. So, um, all right, we're disconnecting. I don't think we're going to push our luck anymore, but, uh, but yeah, um, do I do a replay? Well, let's, I can, you know what, let's do that. I don't normally, but I've disconnected so I can, let's, let's set it for about the last, oh, I don't know, three minutes. Nope, I got to go farther back than that. I, I was hemming and hawing too much. Uh, four minutes, so two, four, zero. Okay, let me, I'm going to try to get a view. I don't know what view will it, maybe that view? I don't even know. It's, it's going to be wicked no matter how we do it. So let's see don't what sing. this looks like. Don't sing. Don't sing. I wasn't getting that warning. Don't sing. See there, I can see the trees. So I know Don't I've at sing. least hit the island. Don't sing. Don't sing. Don't Cookie sing. dough concrete. Don't yeah. Sing. That's a rock Don't solid sing. choice, man. Don't sing. Right there we picked it up. About 300. Don't sing. Don't sing. Don't sing. Don't sing. Yeah, I can't Don't do sing. that cool X-plane spin sing. around thing. Don't sing. I was Don't crabbing sing. a little more than I thought. Don't sing. Don't sing. Don't sing. Don't sing. Hey, you can't even really see my landing lights. They're not having any kind of effect. That was not half bad, guys. I mean, right? Yeah, you can't even see the plane there, so it's not worth even showing you that angle. Uh, let me do one more from inside. Let me do just one more from inside because it's really, it was it was fun watching. So disregard the don't sink. That's I don't know why that's coming in here, but yeah. So don't here sink. we're coming through. Don't sink. Five hundred for four hundred. Right here you don't can see sink. this is our minimums don't indicator sink. for this don't plane. So there's. 300 we're just about there ooh right there so about 275 is when we caught our first glimpse and i think technically you're legal at that point don't sink don't sink yeah we're down below minimums right now don't sink yeah so that thanks downwind it was it was fun and and uh all the way around good atc they got me right right in the sweet spot um, the ground had emergency vehicles ready, which was comforting, you know, made me nice and relaxed. Um, approach was on the, uh, on the mic 
doing stand-up comedy all the way down to you, trying to keep me relaxed, which I appreciate. No, it was overall just a lot of fun. So, uh, all right. Well, hey, um, hey, Sam, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys, uh, Sam Bolvin checking in. He was, he's Nantucket ground. Um, I'm a big fan of what you guys do out here with your events and your, uh, your airspace. So, um, thanks, thanks for everything. And, and, uh, yeah, I love, it's part of why I love Nantucket, man. It's just, you never know what you're going to get. Some nights are like this. And, and, uh, so it's always good to, it's always good to test a down to minimums approach. I don't have my flaps put up, but yeah. So, well, anyway, guys, I think we're going to, we're going to wrap it up. Let me just give you a quick look ahead. I don't have anything on the schedule officially, but I do think that we're going to be able to make the uh, the Friday Night Ops. It's up in the Minnesota area. Um, we'll be up there. Speaking of harassing ATC, we'll be up harassing Ground Point Niner. And uh, not sure yet exactly what, uh, what the plan is, where we're going to be flying out of. Heck, maybe we'll depart out of uh, Nantucket and fly clear up to uh, to Minneapolis St. Paul I'll just have to see how I'm feeling on on Friday after work but uh, that will be our next officially I guess scheduled event so I uh, would love to love to see you guys there maybe you fly along with us you know Al South maybe that's your maybe that's your uh, your first bat sim flight man as a little a little uh, something into the Minneapolis airspace there um uh, i know he's getting he's getting ready to do that and and uh so anyway uh wolfpack gamer thanks again for stopping by nix it was good talking to you as well i hope you guys have a, a tremendously great evening al south you take care buddy um and uh and hope you get out camping at least one more time man We're, we talked early in the stream about taking advantage of those last precious days of summer since today is the last day of july you got to do that um and downwind uh, you know man um always good to talk to you and and uh good to good to hear from you as well and then sam atc from nantucket uh good good meeting you and and hopefully we'll see you back on the channel at some point in time but to everybody else um we'll be looking for you on the tcas and until then take care and god bless